Hello and welcome back to the RDA, welcome back to the channel, I hope you are doing well, it's your boy Triple M and we'll be talking about the scintillating performance by Liverpool as well as Man City last evening and my thoughts, um, to be honest I didn't watch the Man City game but who does, I think Man City have an unfair advantage because they're used to playing with fans out of the ground, you know they've been doing it for 15 years, people saying that since Liverpool have missed Virgil van Dijk, they might not win the league. And I think that's a little bit false. You know, it's kind of like the people who say Real Madrid were kind of crap after Ronaldo left, Real Madrid this, Real Madrid that. They wouldn't have won three Champions Leagues without Ronaldo. Fam, let me tell you something. Real Madrid wouldn't have won three Champions Leagues in a row if it wasn't for players like Ramos, if it wasn't for players like Tony Cruz. Modric, who is the, one of the most underrated and disrespected midfielders in his prime. Gareth Bale, Karim Benzema. And I tell you what, after Ronaldo left, Real Madrid went on to win a La Liga title, which is something they haven't done with Ronaldo. So I'm, I'm never a, a fan of this one player wins things for a team. It's a team sport. Trent Alexander-Arnold, one of the best right backs in the world, if not the best right backs in the world, and probably of that decade. Robertson, you know the rest fam, I don't need to introduce him. Gomez, very steady, very consistent, you know. A lot of Liverpool fans actually like Gomez, you know. Hendo. We don't need to talk about the boy Hendo. He was under the radar before Klopp got to Liverpool. But ever since, you know, your boy got some better players around him. He's showing his leadership qualities, fam. Wijnaldum, he's a good midfielder. The only problem with Wijnaldum is my granny can run faster than him. But he's a good midfielder, you know what I'm saying? Mane, Salah. Don't need to say anything. Firmino. Firmino and his hold-up play. Absolutely vital to Liverpool. And they didn't even need him last evening. That's what makes me so impressed by this Liverpool side. They've upgraded. We're seeing the evolution. We're seeing the team without Firmino. We're seeing the team without Van Dijk. And Atalanta are no joke, you know. So to beat Atalanta 5-0, an accomplished side in the last 15 months, yeah? Absolutely amazing. Yota, let's start with, let's start with him. What did I think of him? First of all, let me start by saying I think Diego Yota is the best signing of the transfer window. I don't care what Arsenal fans say about Gabriel. I don't care what Chelsea fans say about Timo Werner. I don't care what what what, what Tottenham fans say when they see Gareth Bale pop on with the screen and the lube comes out, fam, and the belt buckle goes off. I don't give a toss here. Yeah. The reason why I think Diego Yota is one of the most quintessential and important signings of the transfer window is because when you look at Liverpool, a team that has lost their best defender, obviously they couldn't foresee this coming, but there's a reason why they spent money so that they could have squad depth and have a different alternate players are missing or certain players go under the radar. The reason why Diego Yacht is such a good signing is because everybody said about Firmino that he's not a goal-scoring striker. He is a striker that's more of a team player who gets assists and is an amazing link-up and hold-up play, right? A lot like Martial, just without the goals, right? So when I look at Firmino and the fact that he hasn't been playing particularly well in the last, give or take, six to, six to seven months, according to some Liverpool fans, right? To have someone like Diego Yota, who is everything Firmino is not, and bring him into the team, and he almost fits, you know, seemingly into the system, like he was a piece of the jigsaw puzzle that was missing all along for Liverpool. And how can you say a team that won a league had a missing piece anyways, you know? So that, that, that makes it even more mind-blowing. They've improved going forward, fam. That is the first time in a long time I have seen a Liverpool attack, and I've thought to myself, damn, bro, like, damn. This could be one of the best teams in Europe, you know. I know I'm getting ahead of myself because it's just one game, but I genuinely rate Liverpool that highly because of what they've accomplished. You know, I've watched Liverpool. Obviously, I'm a Manchester United fan, but I've watched, I've bantered, I've laughed, I've read memes about this team for 30 years. And to finally see them start to do well and cement their place amongst the elite in Europe is absolutely impressive. And I think Diego Yota getting a hat-trick was, was a magnificent performance. So uh, 10 out of 10 performance for me, man. Moving on from Diego Yota, um, because um, he is a Liverpool player and I can't spend too much time talking about him on this channel, okay? Um, Mo Salah, what did I think of him? Uh, Mane, what did I think of him? A lot of adjectives, adjectives to describe Mane and Salah. Uh, excellent, magnificent, um, stupendous, superb, uh, perfection. Mo Salah on the counter-attack was absolutely lethal. 
yesterday evening. And he didn't even look like he was trying. I mean, he looked like he was trying when he was running. But when he slowed down and sort of just cut in and whacked it with his left foot, it didn't look like he was trying. It looked like he it looked like someone was playing FIFA. And they knew they were about to score the goal. They knew they were about to help their favorite player get to the top goal scorer charts in career mode, fam. So they were just like, let me just take my time. Let me let the AI keep running. Let me take my time. Create space. I'll won. You know, or whatever the finesse button is on FIFA anyways. Um, and then with Mane, I think Mane was unlucky not to score with that finesse curler. I think their goalkeeper had a had a, had a decent game, to be honest. Had a, I think he had a decent game, to be honest. I think Liverpool were just too good. He made some really good saves, you know. Um, Mane could have definitely scored a screamer. Um, I forgot which minute it was in, but Mane had a finesse curler around... Uh, he wrapped his right foot around the ball, and it was... I can't remember. I think it was in the first half. And basically, it was a magnificent save from that keeper. It was almost identical to the shot that Salah scored, just with his right foot, you know. And uh, I, th I, th I think that was, that was interesting. But yeah, moving on. I don't need to talk about those two anymore. Um, there's a lot of youngsters in that Liverpool team that I won't spend too much time on because this video is already dragging on longer than I wanted it to. Um, but I'll move on and talk a bit about Atlanta and, and what I think of them. Zabata, however you pronounce his name, the, the forward for Atalanta, had a magnificent game yesterday. And what impressed me about him is that even when his team were 5-0 down, he kept his head down and he kept, he kept focused. He kept moving forward. He kept attacking. He kept pushing, pushing, pushing. Eventually, he hit the crossbar and some freakish shot did not end up in the back of the net, fam. He was unlucky. He looked like he wanted to celebrate already, fam. I don't know why you want to celebrate, why you're prematurely celebrating when your team's 5-1 down, but... You know, it is what it is. The boy was just using his opportunity, his platform to show how good he is. I don't know much about this player and I actually should have done my research before this video, but um, it's like 8 a.m. and I just woke up to record this video. So yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm not about that life. But what I do like about that player is I think that a lot of teams around Europe will be watching. This, this is the beauty of the Champions League. A lot of teams around Europe will be watching games like Man City, games like Liverpool, games that Manchester United are playing in, games that Real Madrid are playing in, games that Juve are playing in, all these big teams. And so even if you're not playing for those teams, as long as you're playing against them, you have a platform to showcase your skill. That's why it's so important for players to get Champions League football in their career, because it's the pinnacle of competitive football where you get to showcase your ability. The fact that he tore apart Liverpool's defence single-handedly three or four times in that game to get himself a shot, for me, is absolutely magnificent and he actually beat Ellison once you know if he didn't hit the crossbar or the post or whatever whatever part of the goal frame he hit when that ball didn't go in I think I think I would have given him a 10 out of 10 to be honest to be completely honest but um, amazing performance from Zubeta. Um at Atlanta as a whole I think they just gave Liverpool too much space in behind Liverpool are a team you know people say Manchester United is one of the best counter-attacking teams in England. And I, I do agree, but keyword, one of the best. You know who's the other best? Liverpool. Liverpool are deadly on the counter-attack. And what I love and what I envy and what makes me, what irks me so much about Liverpool is the fact that they can play on the counter. They build up. They can play with a quick build up. They can hold the ball. They can press up high, win the ball back and hit you in transition. They can do all the variations of the counter-attacks that there are out there that I can personally think of, and more. And when you combine that with the performance they had last evening, it's hard to imagine a world where this team, even without Virgil van Dijk, does not win the league. Because I've been saying this about Liverpool for a very long time. They win even when they're not playing well. Even when they have the worst defence in the league, they're still at the top of the table. People keep going on about performance this, performance that. Performance means nothing in football if you don't have the results. A team that's playing worse but still getting the results is much better than a team that's playing well but drawing 3-3 three three at home, fam, to teams like West Brompton. No offense to Chelsea fans, fam. Um, I, I, I guess I did say I was going to talk about Manchester City, but to be honest, there's not much to talk about. They won their game 3-0. Uh, Pep Guardiola was smiling in the press conference, fam. You know them right there. Yeah, I think we need a striker. Um, yeah, I, I, yeah. You, you know how it is with that fraud, fam. With these, with these low pitch voice, fam. And, and you know, I, I, I don't know what to say about Man City. I respect Man City. Um, I think them finishing second in the league uh, and and dropping off from what they were two seasons ago is quite interesting. I think if Liverpool doesn't win the league, they will still win the league because I still do think Manchester City are miles ahead of everybody else except Liverpool. Um, yeah, I, I don't really have much to say. I wish I had a better Pep Guardiola uh, impression. I think on the weekend, 
Man City versus Liverpool. It's going to be a very, 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 very interesting match. And I, I think I'm going to do a preview for that match. All I will say is Manchester City haven't been playing particularly well. Liverpool haven't been playing particularly well. 1-1-3-0 yesterday evening. 1-1-5-0 against a better team yesterday evening. Um, winning, winning 3 nil against a Greek restaurant. It's the same Greek restaurant that knocked Arsenal out of, out of the Europa League last season, fam. So, you know. Anyways, I hope you did enjoy that video. Uh, leave a like and please do subscribe if you are new. I know the Manchester United fans in the building wouldn't have enjoyed that one. But you know what? Rivalry. Not enemies. Rivals. Not enemies. You know, this whole thing of, you can't compliment Liverpool, you're a United fan. Childish, bro. I'm a football fan and a United fan. I can watch other teams play football and admit when they're doing well. I can watch other teams play football and admit when I think they're not doing well. I don't think Liverpool was doing particularly well in terms of performance, but I still kept on drilling it down people's necks that this team can still and will still win the league if they continue to be consistent because it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter whether you're passing with triangles. It doesn't matter whether you're playing balls over the top. It doesn't matter whether you're playing with flair and your football is attractive and pleasing on the eye. If it doesn't get the results, it doesn't mean anything, in my opinion, because teams that win titles don't play fast, flair attacking football 90% of the time. When was the last time you saw a performance like that from Liverpool? Bear in mind, they lost 4-0 to Manchester City after lockdown, yeah, and they still won the league by like 20 points. I'm telling you guys, consistency first, performance second. It's been your boy Triple M. Peace out.